Hey guys, it's Sunday and this is episode 2 of a CMM involving into a 3D printer. Before we can move on to fitting something new is to, well, rip everything off that has been put on this machine so far. So, enjoy this. So, first of all, I'm really grateful on all your ideas you posted below my, my last video. And we'll definitely go into detail even more on this. But the first thing I figured out for myself is that anyways, we're going to use the ways of the machine like they're supposed to be. So it's going to be a three axis Cartesian coordinate system, uh, no matter what. This is my decision from that point on. So before we get into any detail on what setup we use, what it should be doing at the end, uh, we're going to focus on making that um, that at least three axis thing going. So my first decision is that I don't want to be chasing nanometers with this project. I mean, it would definitely be possible, but uh, we want a reliable and easy to prototype base. So that means I have to get all the axes working and get the controller hooked up and stuff like that. So if we choose to build it 100% right away, um, we're going to end up using month of work and basically be not really open for changes or really fast adapting new projects on it. So. Um, the proper base I'm imagining is to um, build some sort of a low budget solution. But I think for what we are planning, this is going to be more than adequate because, um, you know, the, the geometrical alignment and uh, relation to the axis and such are close to perfect. They're you saw the pictures of the micron indicator not even moving a bit so any error we introduce is gonna be a direct derivative of the components we use my plan is to use standard rolled ball screws and combine them with some jmc integrated servers as a brain, we'll ditch the PLC for now and use a pretty cheap Arduino-based solution. And I'm really curious to see what type of precision we can reach with these components. But I'll definitely get the ceramic gauge blocks out to, to measure that. I guess we have the perfect base for doing so. So also, I'm deciding on if I want to um, add up all the the budget numbers and maybe give you the opportunity to rebuild all of this because I don't think it's some kind of sorcery that is going on um, you can do this with a minimal budget I guess all you have to do is invest time and that's what I'm trying to show you that even with a low budget but a good plan you can um, get really good results this is where we're at we've made pretty good progress on cat drawings and such so I guess the machine is completely set up in cat system the last day I was just busy uh, getting all the the axes constructed to the point where I'm happy with it so I'm quite happy with the placement of the ball screws and the servos on the Z and X axis. Where I'm not happy with is the Y axis, which is uh, this one. 
I've been playing around with like at least six different versions of this. It's always a very different thing to build a machine from scratch where you can decide on everything than to retrofit an already existing machine. In this case, it is even more difficult because the only bolt holes you got are these, which is an M4. There was the old uh, linear scale mounted, or right behind here. I don't even know what was mounted there. But I just don't seem to find a way where everything fits. Uh, I do have some constraints, of course. The uh, linear forces are being put into this piece. I want it to be somewhere in the middle, of course. I don't want it to stick out too much to basically create too much leverage. I don't want to have too much of, of weight up in the front, etc., uh, etc. Et so um, I was playing around with a few options I got, and one of them was to have the motor mounted in here, have a transmission, a belt, run to the ball screw up in here, and basically attach the, the ball nut down here which was kind of the thing I had uh, as a setup the last time. But I had the motor sticking out like here, and I didn't want to have that anymore. So um, because I was curious to see how this was fit and how it would feel, I quickly put this on a 3D printer last night. This is just a mock-up piece with the threads in it and which connect to the to the base of the machine. Um, and just put in some wood screws to just see if I did everything wrong, uh, everything right in the cat. With the air hooked on, I can at least move all of this right up here, just to see, okay. I wasn't totally wrong, so there is clearance and that would actually work. I would, yeah, this would be a great fit. Also, I mean, the ball screw, I'm pretty much, I do know that this would fit. But what I really wanted to know is how much space I do have left if there is an actual hot end extruder or whatever up here. Okay, that was compressor. So, if I move this in the most upper position, I do have right about 150 millimeters that I have clearance from, from this plate on. So, if I move all the way over here, I think we're gonna have lots of space to, you know, get the uh, the lines ran to the extruder motors, get the filament to extrusion points, etc. So this might be an option, but I will be testing one different cap design, maybe give it a, a test print, and then settle on a, the actual plan. So some people say you should at least have once in your life wear a fur directly on your skin. But you have to feel a machine like this on air bearings once in your lifetime if you're an engineer or just having fun playing around with technical stuff. So I mean, this machine is geometrically perfect. So there's literally no resistance at all if you uh, have the air hooked on and move it around, but it's just, I could play with this day and night, and so I did. So I'm gonna give you a small insight on what I did actually plan in CAD. Um, everything is like 90% finished in terms of the, um, the axis movement. I did order all the materials and they should be here start of next week. This is Sunday the 13th, by the way. So I guess I can really start to um, assemble everything 
and um, put stuff together on like Tuesday. What I'm trying is to basically have this video uploaded today, Sunday, and I will try to have the three axis setup running by next Sunday or um, to be more precise, have a video on that up on next Sunday. Um, the Sunday after that, I want to have this machine actually printing. So I can't promise to deliver that, but I try my very best. If you want to stay updated, leave a like, consider subscribing. Um, I try to put in some work to make this eventually happen in 2020. So also I could imagine having a bit of a Q&A session at the end of the next videos. So I encourage you to comment two things. If you do have a specific question on what I'm building, um, feel free to ask that. If you want me to cover a specific project like um, how I pick the ball screws, the matching ones, how I pick the servos, how I like, how is my, um, my method of starting a CAT uh, or a construction project, project like that. Um, I encourage you to post that question and we'll have a look at that at the end of next video. Basically, you can tell me what you want to see in the next video, um, otherwise it's going to be just the finished result. Um, anything you want to have covered in detail, please let me know. So with that, stay tuned and we'll see us next week, I guess. So bye.